Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending September 28th. First up, this one was sent in by Arizona Wacko. This is not a normal story that I'm reporting on. This is a YouTube user called Mr. Sparky Aprilla. And like a lot of YouTube moto vloggers, he's selling uh, decals, um, personal decals. But in his case, this is a little bit different of a situation. He's selling his decals to raise money for a foundation called the DBA Foundation. Now you probably never even have heard, on this, heard of this because this is a very little known disease. In fact, it's called one of those orphan diseases because so very few people have it. It's called Diamond Black Fan Anemia. And the reason why this should be important to especially us as moto vloggers is a moto vlogger by the name of Bran7701, that's a female moto vlogger. She happens to have a daughter I think she's 12 years old and she happens to have this type of anemia and there's less than a thousand people in the entire world that has this type of anemia and it causes your body to not produce red blood cells and so her daughter and a lot of other people with the same syndrome have to end up having constant blood transfusions. Well, Mr. Sparky Aprilla is going to take this money and put this money towards the DBA Foundation. This is not even going towards Brand's daughter. This is going to the DBA Foundation because it's very important to her and to everybody with DBA that money is supporting this foundation because they operate on a budget of around $300,000 per year, which is not very much to work with. And Mr. Sparky Aprilla just wants to try to raise, if he possibly can, $300 from the moto vlogging community and anybody else that's interested. And in exchange, if you go to his page, I'll send you. I'll put the link to his page. Go up to the top where the banner is on the top of his YouTube channel, and to the bottom right-hand side of the top banner, you will see a link to click on to do your donation. And he just asked for somebody to give two pounds, uh, which is two British pounds, which would be the equivalent of something like three dollars. And he will send you one of the decals, and then he will take that money and then put it in the DBA Foundation. And uh, myself, I donated three pounds. Three pounds equals almost exactly five dollars at the present exchange rate. I figure, what's five dollars? And you get a nice decal from uh, Mr. Sparky Aprilla, and also the money goes to uh, an organization that will help one of our fellow moto vloggers. And uh, I'll also give you the links to the channels. Be sure and uh, uh, check that out, especially um, Brand 7701's channel and uh, the story about her daughter. It's also included on a video link that I'll put below for Mr. Um, Sparky Aprilla's channel. It'll be um, at least three links below. They'll be the first three links. Check them out. Next up, this was sent in by my pal NT8. This is from the NAS NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory. I don't know if many of you followed their rescue, uh, search and rescue efforts during 9-11, but they were talking about some technology that wasn't quite ready, but they would like to use that had some type of a radar ranging system that could even detect the breathing or the heartbeat of a mouse. Well, actually now, NASA and the Jet Propulsion Laboratory have actually released some technology for fire and rescue workers that can detect human heartbeats in a rubble pile. I'm going to give you just a little clip, just about 30 to 40 seconds of this, and then I'll give you the link to the full video. But check out, this is a device called Finder. A finder is a radar called Finding Individuals for Disaster and Emergency Response. It's a radar that sends a low power microwave signal through the rubble. It looks for the very tiny reflections caused by the motion of the victim's breathing and heartbeat. We were approached by the NASA Jet Propulsion Lab about some new technologies they had developed and what we thought they could be useful for in the civilian emergency response world. We've been out here testing now for about a year uh, on and off, improving the project, working with the Virginia Task Force One Urban Search and Rescue Team. First responders can arrive at a disaster site and can rapidly look at a series of buildings and determine if there are victims in there so that we can rescue them in time. And this next one comes from my friend 1954 Shadow and this is from the Huffington Post. It's called Bee Venom Kills HIV. Um, they're, what they're developing is they're developing a type of, and it really, to me, it's not so much the bee venom, and that's the really um, great part of the story. The great part of the story is the method they use to attack the HIV, which also may be used for other viruses like hepatitis and things like that. What they do is they actually take nanoparticles and uh, coat it in this bee venom called melatonin. I think I'm pronouncing that right. It's a... Uh, very close to melanin, I, the way it's spelled, so I'm hoping I'm pronouncing it correctly. But the main thing is the mechanism behind this uh, and its use. 
what they're going to do is put a type of a bumper surface on top of this after they get the nanoparticle infused with the bee venom and then what will happen is these bumpers um, there is not enough space between them to fit a human cell so they will actually if they're injected into the bloodstream or something like that and they happen to touch a human cell they won't affect it at all they'll basically bounce off but because HIV viruses are so small they will actually fit between the bumpers and then this bee venom will be able to actually attack and destroy the cells and because it works in a mechanical way on the envelope that protects the virus they believe there's no way the virus could possibly adapt because viruses have to have some kind of protective coating to hold the uh, the genetic information together to still be a virus otherwise without the protective envelope it just breaks apart and it's just uh, you know extraneous material to be gobbled up by your white blood cells so um, if you get a chance like everything else the articles to this will be down below and uh, next up I actually have a roving reporter on the TDD report this time this is my buddy clash 230 and he's going to talk about strange things happening in Texas take it away clash so, I get up yesterday morning, read the newspaper, two or three local papers, Dallas Morning News, uh, Fort Worth Star, and uh, some headlines catch my eye. Apparently, folks got up in Dallas, and actually through North Texas, and uh, started calling radio stations, TV stations, calling all the newspapers, some called emergency services, wondering what was going on or making reports. Uh, they were reporting anything from uh, alien spiders have invaded the city. Some are reporting that uh, uh, Spider-Man came through the city last night. Some were just confused and thought, you know, hey, hey, did, did I miss something? Did they move up Halloween? Yep, there was a panic around the city, panic around North Texas. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. Ah! Oh, okay. Uh, well, it wasn't Spider-Man and there wasn't a spider alien invasion and Halloween didn't come early. Probably cooler than all three of those is what actually happened. Migrating spiders. Here, I'll show you the headlines. What happens is there's a variety of spiders that migrate and uh, it's that time of year here in North Texas. So with the evening before cooling off, it sort of tripped their wire, tripped the mechanism to tell them that, hey, they need to migrate and how they migrate uh, is they shoot out their web into the air and the breeze carries them, carries a spider from tree to tree, tree to building, building to building, and so on. Well, the problem was there was no breeze. It was just uh, still calm. So, all these spiders sh shoot their web into the air and, and it doesn't go anywhere. And so they do it again and again and again. And uh, ultimately they connect the phone, uh, phone lines, cars. Some people came out and there was webbing all over their uh, animals in the yards, their faces, dogs and cats and stuff. And uh, it was really kind of spooky. And uh, especially this happens, this migration happens in very young spiders. And uh, uh, one of the things that this migration does is when you have 
hundreds of spiders in an area and they migrate like this, it sort of breaks up territories, uh, which is a good thing because spiders are very helpful. They, they really, they're incredible for pest control. So anyways, it's false alarm. Nothing big happened. Just a matter of uh, migrating spiders. Uh, I've got some pictures here. Shows a little bit of the webbing around uh, Dallas and what people woke up to see. So with that, I'll leave it. I'll show you it with that. Uh, that's it. Oh, and you might be wondering about the beard. Well, I heard this might be on uh, Suburban Riders TDD report, and I just wanted to fit in. <laughs> See y'all later. Okay, I've just switched from Studio B to Studio A because I wanted to show you guys something. There's been a minor change here. Some of you have said that you noticed in the back there was always this monstrosity hanging down and it was a set of pipes to an old wood-burning stove. Well, it's gone now and in its place is this little thing. So, back to the studio will be looking a little bit different. Now, back to Studio A and the conclusion of the show. Um, thank you Clash for doing the roving report on the TDD report. If you get a chance, check out his channel. That's Clash 230 and that is the letter O, not the number O. I'll put a link to his channel down at the bottom in the description. And also one thing I wanted to mention, and this was brought up by Cash Store One, a friend of mine, I did talk about the fact that Raynex was recommended by GoPro to use for their action cameras for cleaning and anti-fog on the lens. Uh, be aware that Rainex does not recommend the use on any kind of plastics themselves. So you are taking a chance. You could ruin your windshield. You could ruin your windscreen on your helmet, your face shield. So you are taking a chance. If you're in doubt, use it in an inconspicuous area, I would say. Or better yet, contact a manufacturer and see what they recommend as far as a plastic cleaner or polish. Myself, I use the Novus. You can find it at almost any dealer. It's worked out great, but even that isn't perfect. I've even heard of one particular case where it did actually take the uh, thin um, outer coating off of a, a person's, as a matter of fact it was Lori Jennifer, she had a helmet and she tried the Novus on it and there was a, a thin clear coating of some type on a uh, windscreen that she had a, a face shield on her helmet and it did actually take that coating off so be aware with everything. Make sure follow the recommendations and if you're taking a chance you're responsible if something gets ruined. So anyway, that's it for this week, everybody. Take care. I will catch you next week.